There are 10 criteria that Sotheby's specialists consider when assigning prices to art, jewelry, wine, watches, and more. This is how we determine the value of art. Size definitely does matter. Size matters. Size matters and it works both ways. There are artists who you can basically buy by the square inch. The bigger the better, really. Some people say the bigger the better. Bigger is not always better. I think for the longest time in my field, large size was considered about the vulgar. The most expensive things I've ever sold all fit in the palm of my hand. For different artists, size means different things. If you're looking for statement pictures, say a portrayal of David triumphing over Goliath, it's something that needs space. People do want a statement piece, and they don't want to have to buy five things to fill their wall. When something is unusually large, it means that it is the tour de force, the end all of that particular artist's work. He wants to produce a masterpiece so that it can encompass all kinds of really intricate details. We see diamond prices and sapphire prices and emerald prices rise exponentially as they cross over certain carat weights. A one carat D flawless is not one tenth of a 10 carat D flawless. You might think that's the way you should do it, divide it by 10, and that's, but it's very different. I'm a big believer in big bottles. They're not a lot of a main, but they age longer. Not as much air has gotten into the bottle. Even the names are cool. Jeroboam, Salmanazar, Balthazar, Nebuchadnezzar, Melchior. A nine liter of Salmanazar is equivalent to 12 bottles of wine. Some of these bottles take two, three, four, five people to open and to pour. It's not for everyone. Roughly over 84 inches can be a little problematic for a certain clientele. You can have works of art which are prohibitively big, something that we colloquially call Park Avenue doorway size. Once we go into the monumental scale, we actually go backwards on our numbers. We sold to Mark Bradford in September 2013. 48 by 60 inches, it ended up making a million dollars more than an 80 inch work. Francis Bacon is only really working in two sizes, large scale and intimate portrait scale. Quite frequently, the small figureheads are a higher value than the large pictures. In 2007, we were really privileged to sell some works from Stanley Seeger's collection by Alan Davey, one of the really pioneering post-war British artists. Peggy Guggenheim had spotted Alan Davey's work and had introduced him to Jackson Pollock. The story goes that Alan Davey learnt from Pollock to be confident on a large scale. For an artist who'd experienced the war years of austerity in Britain, even getting their hands on artist materials to work on a large scale was really quite hard to do, but when his work was exhibited in New York. Stanley Ziegler walked into Davies' gallery and saw Jackson Pollock helping to lay out these pictures. And Pollock said to Seeger, you need to buy that one. And when that one, which was a picture called Goddess of the Green, came up at auction, it was about 70 inches across. It made a new world record of near 270,000. And it showed that actually size does matter. 